Hi, so I'm Will. I'm going to be talking about uh, connected data. Uh, so this is me. I'm a software developer at Neo4j. Uh, I work on the developer relations team, so mostly I'm working on writing integrations with other technologies, making Neo4j work with different frameworks. Uh, but I also get to travel around and come to conferences like this and uh, work with customers. So my contact information is up here, so if you have any, any questions, please, uh, please email me, Twitter, uh, and whatever. So when Neo4j was founded, um, there was one overreaching goal in mind, and that was to help the world make sense of data. And the, the, the way that Neo4j does that is by modeling and querying your data as a graph. So we're going to be talking about graphs. So what, what is a graph? Well, we're not talking about charts. So when, when I say a graph, I'm not talking about a line chart or a bar chart, something like that. Instead, what I'm talking about is a data structure of connected data. So when we say connected data, we're talking about nodes. These are the, the entities or the objects in the graph. And relationships are the things that connect uh, or link the nodes in the graph. And what kind of data uh, is, is connected? What, what kind of data can we model as a graph? Well, as Mar talked about, we can model uh, officers, that have some controlling interest in companies and the addresses associated with them. We can model that as a graph to make, help make sense of uh, information like the Panama Papers. You can actually download uh, the public information of the Panama Papers as a Neo4j uh, database on, on this link. But we can also look at social media data. Um, in this case, this is some analysis that some of our partners did with social media data looking at uh, media biases leading up to the Brexit. So this was the, the vote in the UK to leave the European Union. And what they found by analyzing this data is that di by different structures in the network for both the Leave and the Remain side, they found that the Leave side was actually using much more uh, emotional uh, type media to make a more concise and sort of s shorter stories made better for social media. We can also model collaboration networks. In, in this case, uh, we're modeling US Congress as a graph. Um, so we can use this data to, for example, find out which politicians have influence over certain topics in Congress. And we can build interactive visualizations on top of this data. Um, so this is a, a mapping visualization that uses that, that same data model that I just showed to find legislators in US Congress with certain uh, influence over certain topics, but using geographic data to see what districts these legislators represent. So we can build tools like this on top of Neo4j as well. We can also track uh, the flow of money um, in, in politics. In, in this case, we modeled uh, FEC, so election campaign contributions in the US, to see who's donating to uh, what politicians' campaigns, where do these people work? Um, and actually, what I found interesting is I'm from a small state in the US called Montana. And what I found very interesting analyzing the data is that a lot of the money uh, for representatives in Montana was actually coming from people that lived out of state with connections to uh, financial institutions and things like that. Uh, and, and final example, the RAND Corporation is using Neo4j to do analysis um, to identify terrorist networks. Um, they're using uh, clustering algorithms to find clusters of terrorist sympathizers uh, in data. So we talked about graphs. Uh, wh what exactly is Neo4j? So Neo4j is an open source uh, database that models your data as a graph and allows you to query your data uh, as a graph. So we use this query language called Cypher that allows us to, uh, to interact with the graph we, we have lots of customers in, in lots of different uh, industries. So in, in retail, uh, like for example, Walmart.com uses Neo4j to generate product recommendations. Lots of banks use Neo4j for uh, fraud detection, this kind of thing. But we're here, we're interested about analyzing data in, in the context of journalism. So why, how can we use Neo4j in journalism? Um, does this make sense? Well, there's a ton of public data out there um, this data comes from the, the Buenos Aires uh, 
beta portal, which I just found last week, which, which is really cool. So this is information about entrepreneurs in, in, in Buenos Aires. Um, our, our CEO wrote a blog post sort of about the, right after Panama Papers came out and, and talking about the technology and, and sort of his view on Neo4j's role in analyzing data for society at large. And, and I think this, this makes a lot of sense. So he said that the democratization of technologies to make sense of data at scale is an important part of a free and open society. So this, this fits in well with the idea of open source software that, that can be better for society, providing uh, tools to analyze data. And really, if you look at uh, historically, tools like Neo4j have only been available to large corporations uh, or, or governments that have been able to build the technology themselves. But with open source software, we're able to make these sort of tools available to, to anyone, which I think is really awesome. And I absolutely agree with Emil that this is very important. And so because of how, how important we feel about this, we uh, recently launched the what we're calling the uh, Neo4j Data Journalism Accelerator Program. So the idea here is if you have some uh, interesting data set, you have some interesting project in mind uh, that you think makes sense uh, using Neo4j with, uh, this program makes available people like myself and, and my team that will work with you one-on-one -on -one to help import your data into Neo4j, uh, modeling, how can we make sense of it, uh, basically whatever you need to be successful using Neo4j in uh, a data journalism project. So I would encourage you, you can apply this link, uh, bit.ly slash Neo4j underscore DDJ. And as part of this, we're also going to be uh, building some tools and, and integrations with, uh, with Neo4j to make that easier to use for things like visualization and, and importing data. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, doing a couple of workshops. Um, one later today, well, first of all, I'll be at the um, media fair. So please come and see me at the booth there if you have any questions or, or want to learn more. Uh, and then at uh, 3 o'clock, I'll be giving a, uh, a workshop using uh, data from Panama Papers and also uh, using some data from the, the Buenos Aires data portal. Uh, and then. Fernando is also giving uh, a talk later today, uh, both Neo4j and GraphX, I believe. Um, so that looks really cool. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be doing a, a more sort of advanced uh, network analysis and visualization workshop at 9 as well. So please come to any of these if you want to learn more. Um, what I'm really excited about for is the hackathon on Saturday. Uh, I've already heard some great ideas uh, from people who have ideas for projects uh, using Neo4j. So absolutely love to help you. Um, be successful with Neo4j. So thank you very much. Uh, here's my email. Feel free to get in touch. Thank you.